Well, after the surgery, there's always a healing phase in which you will have symptoms, maybe a different symptomatology than before the surgery, but that should disappear after two or three months. You should be actually quite symptom-free. Then it very much depends on what sinusitis you have. There are different kinds of sinusitis. Nowadays, we talk about phenotypes that with or without nasal polyps, but there are also endotypes that are internal mechanisms that make a difference between how likely it is that you get symptoms back or polyps back or not. And it's unfortunately though that in those patients with polyps in Europe, we have quite a high chance of recurring polyposis. And with that symptoms, loss of smell, secretion, nasal obstruction, not so much pain. And that means that we have to really uh, counsel the patients to do a long-term treatment, topical treatment mostly, and also to follow controls over the time because that disease otherwise is not controlled. Nasal polyposis per definition is like asthma, a chronic disease. What we understand today is that there is inflammation in these patients that can come back or and there are triggers triggers like bacteria like viruses a common cold like fungi and they can initiate an upregulation of the inflammation again which then turns into nasal polyps so even if a patient is free of polyps for a year it doesn't guarantee that the next common cold would start up a new uh, disease episode. Here we have international definitions and normally it's three months so everything that lasts more than three months. In reality what we see in the practice is patients suffer for years from that. So the three months might be a bit short but it's more a need for definitions here but the reality really is long-term, actually lifelong in those patients with polyps rather than in those without nasal polyps where it can be, for example, by surgery cured in many cases. Well, the upper airways, the sinuses, are a part of the total airways, which includes the lower airways. And that means 50 to 60 percent of our patients with nasal polyps have or will get in the course of the disease a comorbid asthma. So they will also have a disease of their lower airways as a consequence of the inflammation playing in the upper airways. So there's a comorbidity issue and there are studies that show that early intervention may, may prevent this comorbidity. So there's a clear um, risk in that sense that you get other diseases with it. And the other thing, of course, you maintain your symptoms. And I have to say, this is really bad. Pain or nasal obstruction, no smell, is really bad for quality of life, for your performance. So there are many reasons to rather get it treated than not.